Looks good. All right. Uh, my name is Tim Miller. Thank you guys for coming um, uh, off of Facebook or Twitter. Uh, this is the first one of these that we have done for RVAT. I look forward to doing a few more. Uh, I'm coming at you uh, live from Oakland here, uh, California. I'm wearing my Joe Biden 2020 shirt. Um, you know, and that maybe not every Republican voter against Trump has has come to terms with Biden yet, but I'm I'm Team Joe. Um, before we get, it looks like we're adding people here. Before we get them, I want to see if uh, the screen share thing works here. It doesn't doesn't really look like that's going to work. Um, okay, that's all right. Well, we um, uh, we basically wanted to get everybody together to talk to you about a few things. What is Republican Voters Against Trump? What are we doing? What's our strategy? And where do you guys come in as being important members of the team? So for those who don't know, here's the quick answer. Republican Voters Against Trump came out of uh, defending democracy together and Republicans for the rule of law. I'm working on it with Sarah Longwell, uh, Bill Kristol, uh, Mike Murphy, and assorted uh, other wonderful, talented people who are uh, who are watching this and helping us behind the scenes. Um, and basically, the idea was we wanted to elevate voices like yours. Um, we feel like there'd been a lot in 2016 of elite never Trumper types. Um, who I think a lot of regular voters tuned out. And, and so what we learned in talking to reluctant Trump voters or people who had started to change their mind about Donald Trump is they were convinced when they heard from people like them. They tuned out, you know, gas bags like me. And so what we've done here is create a platform where we all can come together. Um, we can be support structure for one another. So it's not so lonely out there to be a Republican against Trump. And uh, you can hear from people like yourselves. And hopefully you can um, uh, be a voice for other people. You can tell your story. And hopefully that will resonate um, with other types of, uh, of Republican voters. So, you know, it's a little bit grassroots, it's a little bit community building, it's a little bit advertising. Um, and uh, essentially, uh, what we'll do here when we take all these videos is the very best ones are going to be promoted uh, in the swing states, you know, on YouTube, on Facebook, on television. Uh, we'll have a, a, a very significant ad campaign uh, that will take these arguments, hopefully convince more people to vote against Trump, uh, so we can be rid of him once and for all in November. Uh, that's the gist of the program. We're super excited about it. It's been crazy. We've had tens of millions of these uh, tes these testimonies have been viewed tens of millions of times already. Uh, the RVAT Twitter uh, uh, feed already has more tweets than me, uh, or just about more followers than me, I mean, which I'm taking very personally. I put a lot of time into all the followers I gained, uh, but we love that it's resonating with people. And um, uh, uh, we just had, if you don't see it, a wonderful uh, Trump impersonator uh, named J.L. Covan, C-A-U-V-I-N, uh, do a nice riff on one, of the, on one of the videos. I hope you can check that out on our Twitter feed or on his Twitter feed uh, and get a kick out of that. Um, and uh, what I wanted to show you, but I don't think my, uh, my screen share is going to work, we'll get this next time, is we had an amazing video yesterday, which goes to show if you're shy, if you're embarrassed about submitting a video, don't be. This guy at 2 in the morning in North Carolina, named Josh, um, was outside smoking a cigarette, didn't have his shirt on, and he sent us one minute on how bad he feels about voting for Donald Trump last time. Uh, it was a little bit one part testimonial, one part, you know, AA meeting, uh, uh, just uh, airing of past mistakes, venting, getting that off his chest, uh, said he'd vote for a tomato can over Donald Trump. I think that's something many of us can agree with. Um, I, if you have not seen Josh from North Carolina, go to rvat.org go to our Twitter feed, go to our YouTube feed and check him out. It's hilarious. And watch all these other videos. And, and, and this is, there are other ways you guys can help, and I want to t get to this in a minute, but this is the main way that you guys can help if you are a Republican voter against Trump, if you have friends who are, uh, if you're a former Republican, send us a video. It's easy to do. You go to rvat.org. We have a nice uh, uh, explanation, um, a very simple um, uh, uh, instructions on how to do it. You put in your name, you put in your email, you put in your Twitter fit handle if you want to be famous. Um, you tell us a little bit about yourself, uh, and then you just do a selfie video. Um, you don't have to be shy about it. Uh, if you mess up a little bit, we've got really smart guys and great, talented uh, people behind the scenes who will cut it up and, and make you look good. Uh, if you want to send in two, send in two. We'll pick the best one. Um, and 
if you have friends who will do it, do it. The more we want, we want a to show people the the strength in numbers that that comes with being a Republican against Trump. Help other people build the courage just by seeing just how many of us there are out there. We get dismissed in the media. We shouldn't be. Um, that's one reason to do it. But the other reason is we want to hear everybody's views are different. You know, there are a million reasons to hate this president. My reasons aren't going to be the same as Tommy's in Texas or, you know, Nancy's in Oklahoma. And so we want to hear you and your friends' reasons because maybe you have an angle on this that's really going to click with somebody who's on the fence. Um, so that is the main pitch. We want you to be involved in that. There are other ways to get involved. I'll get, I'll, I'll get to that in a second. But um, uh, first, uh, I will uh, take a peek and see whether we've got any questions here. Um, oh, we've got a little Joe Mentum thing. No questions yet. Great. Um, so, you know, here are the other... Um, uh, here are the other ways we can to get involved, and I think this is super important. You're on Facebook. You're, you're saying, Tim, you know, I, I don't want to do a video, or I can't because of my job, or I already did my video. Um, what are other ways that we can help? Just on social media alone. Here are the key states that we're looking at right now. Pennsylvania, Wisconsin, North Carolina, Arizona, the four main ones. Michigan is also on the radar, though I think Biden's looking pretty good in Michigan. Florida is also on the radar. Really, Biden is doing surprisingly well in Florida right now. I know Florida has been a little bit of fool's gold for the Democrats lately, but Biden is looking good in Florida. Um, stretch states, Georgia, Texas, Ohio, Iowa. No matter who you are, if you're watching this, you know somebody in one of these 10 states, right? And so what we're looking for is if they're a Republican, post our videos, send them our videos. Maybe something will resonate with them. Um, if they're a Republican against Trump, ask them to send us a, a, a video. If they're a Democrat, just ask them to post it on their Facebook feed. I, you know, I think you'd be surprised at how, how your network expands very quickly. You know, if you've got a friend who lives in uh, Raleigh, North Carolina, they've got a whole network of Republican friends, right? So even if they're a Democrat, they post this video um, other people in their community are going to see it. Um, we obviously are doing a targeted advertising campaign to reach these people, um, but I, I think there's a way that you guys can think about how, what are some what are some pretty easy steps for how I can help spread um, spread these um, these testimonials out. Um, there are other other ways to get involved. Absolutely, writing letters to the editor, doing things like that. You can message us here on Facebook and send, send me a message on Twitter. I'm Tim O D C. My my direct messages are open, um, but uh, um, uh, th this, you know, thinking about how to spread these videos um, is the prime, uh, you know, is the prime goal here because we've tested this and we know that it works. Um, you know, when we're doing it, the types of voters we're trying to reach, people that voted for Mitt Romney. People who voted for Mitt Romney last time and didn't like Donald Trump, but they also hated Hillary more. Everybody watching this knows somebody like that. So they held their nose and voted for Donald Trump. That's the person we're trying to get to. How can we move that person to maybe write in somebody? My mom wrote in the Pope last time. Let's move a Trump voter to writing in the Pope this time. That's a plus one. Um, can we get him to Biden? Great. That's a plus two. Um, voters who voted for Mitt Romney in 2012, but last time were grossed out by Trump, but they couldn't do it for Hillary. Hillary was too, a step too far for them. So they, you know, wrote in zombie Ronald Reagan, or they voted for Evan McMullen or Gary Johnson. Uh, you know, uh, uh, that was understandable last time. It was an understandable calculus. How do we move those people over to Joe Biden's camp? Um, and then there were, you know, folks like me who, who did make the switch last time to Hillary um, from Mitt Romney. How do we keep those people and make sure they don't get, they don't slide back um, into the Republican camp because of, you know, uh, uh, how, how crazy some of the extreme stuff on the left is. Uh, those are the people we're trying to reach. So if you have people like that in your lives, send them these videos, post, tag them in our, tag them in our videos, um, so that we can do it. Heather's asking, what are some good arguments um, to help turn your conservative friends' family against Trump? This is, this is a great question. Um, what we have seen in our focus groups is that, is that Trump voters um, really, they bristle at being lectured to, right? They bristle at being condescended to about their vote. Um, it's, you know, hey, I get it. Um, I, you know, I, I found, found Donald Trump repulsive last time. I, I it couldn't even, 
I, I didn't even understand or contemplate how somebody could have chosen him. But it doesn't do any good to attack people and make fun of people that made that choice. We got to win over more people. That's the point of this, this process. So um, how can you go in with them and get them to have an open ear? You know, by making them feel bad about their vote, by making them, by saying that Donald Trump's stupid and you're stupid for supporting him, that's, that's not opening any ears. And so that's why looking through these videos, go to rvat.org and see Listen to what these people are saying. You know, maybe some of them sounds like your mom or your uncle or your brother, and, and you can use some of their arguments. You know, talk about the fact that that spending has been out of control during the Trump presidency. Talk about his just inability to manage. A lot of these people voted for him because they thought he was a good businessman. Um, he hasn't shown a lot of great management skills as we've dealt with these compounding crises. Um, we have a great video from Ryan in Arizona who talks about being pro-life and how being pro-life was so important to him, but how anti-life Trump has been when it comes to kids on the border, when it comes to dealing with um, you know the elderly and coronavirus and the risks that they're taking. Um, so you know those are some ways that we're hoping to you know be able to convince people and move people, and um, and that is. Uh, uh, that is one of those folks. Ken, thank you for um, welcome to take your shirt off. Tom, thank you for talking about my fingernails. My daughter, uh, my daughter tried to do my nails earlier this week. She didn't do a great job, but um, you know she's working on it. Uh, uh, what what else? Do we have any other questions here, or should I? Uh... <laughs> Cue from Charles. Is there any plan to organize a critical mask of prominent GOP pundits and retired political leaders? Yeah, we're, I'm sure some of you guys have heard of the Lincoln Project. We're, we are definitely working with them. Um, you know, John Weaver over there is an old friend of mine, somebody I've worked with on, uh, on campaigns going back 10 years now. Um, uh, uh, Reed Galen is an old friend of mine um, as well. Uh, they have a really fun strategy of getting in Trump's head. You can see that it's working. Um, uh, have loved to see what they're doing. And, you know, I think this is a good complement to that, right? Some of that stuff, you know, is, is good at, in PSYOPs. Some of that stuff is good, you know, for getting uh, increasing energy among the left to be like, hell yeah, we've got these Republicans with us and they're, they're, they're throwing haymakers. Uh, but as far as convincing the um, soft Republican, soft Trump voters, you know, there's some limited value in some of that. And so I think that's where our, what our project is focused on. And that's why we're focused on elevating these regular voices. But absolutely, around the convention, I think you can expect to see more military leaders, more former Republican elected officials um, working with groups like us and the Lincoln Project um, to, uh, to, to speak out in a coordinated, uh, in a coordinated fashion. Uh, cue from Deanna, which videos are the best ones to share? Um, everybody's, I've got my own favorites. Um, uh, I look at ones to see which ones resonate with your community. There was this great article by a professor from Penn who went through all the videos and he said all the regional accents were so interesting to him. Uh, you know, it was a you know, kind of East Coast bubble type thing. So, you know, maybe there are people from your community. You can search by state on the rvat.org website. Um, I'd recommend a couple just jumping to the top of mind. Uh, Justin from Washington has got a million views already on Twitter. It's been amazing. He's a, he's a, a special ops vet uh, who did five tours of duty. He talks very passionately about his patriotism. Um, uh, Tommy from Texas, he's from West Texas, has an awesome accent, was a Trump voter, um, uh, talks about Christian values. Um, I, I, I mentioned... Uh, uh, I mentioned Ryan from Arizona. Uh, I think his story is is really powerful. Um, let me pull up a couple of these other ones that are um, uh, uh, that I think would be good to recommend. Uh, while I do that, I'll go to I'll go to the next question. I'll get right back to you on that, Deanna. Um, Hi, my name is. Jim. Uh, have any focus groups um, shown concern for Trump's long term impact on the GOP? As a message that resonates. Uh, for, particularly for former Republican types, for moving them to Biden, yes. You know, if you have a friend that's a Republican that doesn't like Trump, but that's giving you the whole, well, they're both terrible, the Democrats are terrible, the liberals are terrible too, um, uh, uh, a compelling argument for them is, okay, but you're never going to get your party back until we beat Trump. And, and frankly, as far as I'm concerned, until we crush him. And so, I, you know, I, I, you know, we're going to work till the very last day here and up to, to inauguration day. You know, winning by one vote is great. 
we'll take it. Um, beaten in by 12 points, uh, I think would really have a long-term impact on the party and help us try to rebuild going forward, you know, with groups like the Lincoln Project, with, with I don't know if any of you guys read the bulwark where I write, um, a lot of interesting center-right writing there. Uh, you know, I think our wing of the party has a much better chance of taking back prominence if Trump is anna annihilated. So I, I think that's a compelling message for um, for Republicans who are thinking about sitting it out because they already don't like him. Uh, Charles in Texas uh, is a former pa evangelical pastor, Southern Baptist pastor and a veteran. We just posted him today. He had a very moving story about how, um, in his view, you know, the president has basically... Um, eliminated everything that he fought for. Um, it's, it's, it's almost melancholy uh, in a way, the way that he talks about it, uh, uh, how it's, he's tarnished, excuse me, tarnished everything that he, he worked for. I would recommend that. Uh, Lisa uh, is a, uh, was a, a longtime Republican activist from South Carolina. Uh, she is somebody that uh, I would recommend uh, sharing uh, as well. We just, I talked about Nancy in Oklahoma, more of kind of a rural uh, Oklahoma vibe. She's a teacher, had a very powerful message. Uh, I think these are all good ones to share. If you go to rvat.org, we try to keep it fresh and put, put any new good ones we're getting towards the top. So I'd recommend going back, uh, uh, going back there every couple weeks uh, or every couple days and sending folks that you think are good. Um, question from Greg. Uh, Trump is going to ruin the vote. How do we stop him? Um, by, by crushing him, by beating in big numbers. Um, I, I, I think that that's a very good question. Vote by mail is something that is uh, I'm concerned about. I think this is a little bit outside the mission of the core mission of Ar ARVAT, um, which is talking about these swing voters. But I think that particularly if you're a Democrat that's watching this, young voters in particular, the, the mail, this is, these are not people that are used to putting things in the mail. You know, I'm, I'm 38 and I'm already kind of on the edge of, of feeling comfortable using the mail. I don't really like it anymore. I don't, I don't ever open the mailbox, right? So what, all the people in their 20s, all the Zoomers, young, younger millennials, um, you know, communicating about, about mail-in voting is going to be very important. Um, and, and, and I think that there are going to be groups like ours and others that are going to be holding Trump accountable every time, every time he does anything that indicates um, that uh, he'll be stepping outside the law. We have a partner organization, Republicans for the Rule of Law, with a lot of former Republican lawyers uh, that are working um, on that as well. Q from Dan, what is the strategy for our wing of the party, both domestically and in foreign affairs? Um, <laughs> uh, the strategy is to try to try to take back the, our, the, the party and try to fight it to a draw. I mean, look, I think that um, in foreign affairs right now, we have a very, uh, an ascendant populist wing within the party um, that is, is in line with Trump, frankly, when it comes to a, a uh, zero-sum foreign policy, a foreign policy where you know, America is not a force for good in the world, where America is not a beacon of hope and a beacon of light for the world. We're working with other democratic countries and our partners uh, uh, is a bad thing. We're working within the WHO and NATO is a bad thing. Um, you know, we've got to win that argument back. Uh, I, I, don't, I think this is a little bit outside the scope of what, what our main mission is here. Um, but, uh, uh, um, uh, you know, that I think once we get past 2020, uh, is, is a big, is a big argument. Um, Q from Bob, I found it easy to give reasons to Republicans against Trump, but more difficult to give them reasons to vote for Biden. Listen to this. I, I've got something for you on this. Uh, a vote against Trump and a vote for Biden uh, count the same. Okay. So I, I don't know that we need to, you know, be all that concerned about that. Um, I think that they should be educated about Joe Biden. Uh, they should be educated about the fact that Biden is a guy that has worked across the aisle and has shown a willingness to work, work across the aisle and has frankly gotten mocked on the left by how much of a willingness he has demonstrated to work against the aisle, or work across the aisle, even in the face of a Republican party that has um, you know, grown very hostile to that. Uh, so I think that's one thing uh, for sure. Uh, another thing is Joe Biden is, has, uh, is a man of humanity. He's a man who understands the basic fundamental 
principles of this country. He believes in them. He believes in freedom of speech. He believes in the freedom of markets. He's not a he's not a socialist. Um, he believes in pluralism. Um, that that everybody is welcome here. That everybody should have an opportunity um, to to um, live the American dream. Uh, you know, these are the core tenets that that both parties used to agree on. You know, uh, in the post World War II era. Um, that, that now the far left no longer agrees with and that Donald Trump's party don't, doesn't agree with. So I think in, on, in, those, in that broad sense, you know, Republicans should, should feel a kinship with Joe Biden. But, you know, if they're going to vote for him um, just because they'd vote for a tomato can over Donald Trump, like, uh, like Josh said, uh, that's fine too. Uh, nothing wrong with that. Um, Joe is thanking us for hosting this and for the TV commercials. You're welcome. Um, it takes a Republican to write good ad copy. I don't know about that, but I think this is a personal thing on our side. You know, uh, this is a family feud, just like you know um, how to cut your sibling probably better than a stranger does. Um, uh, you know how to deliver a cutting remark that'll, that'll hurt their feelings um, more than a stranger would. Uh, we, I think, know how to do that within our own tribe. And so we uh, are gladly taking that on uh, with looking for nothing in return except for um, defeating Donald Trump. Um, so this, some more people continue to come in. I just want to re, re, revisit um, the main point of this. Republican voters against Trump. Our mission is for you guys to send us videos of yourself. Tell us your story if you're a Republican voter against Trump. If you're not, get friends who fit that bill to send us their story. You can send it at rvat.org. Um, if your friends... Uh, if you don't have friends that fit that bill, um, then then post these stories, um, uh, share them on Facebook, uh, uh, send them to uh, um, your friends and family members who live in swing states. Again, Wisconsin, Pennsylvania, Michigan, Arizona, Florida, North Carolina, maybe even Georgia, Ohio, Texas. This is um, th these are ways that you can help get involved, and and we're trying to get as many in as possible. We've been overwhelmed over 350 videos already that have been sent to us. It is so cool. Multiple videos have over a million views. Um, uh, you can see how this resonates. You can feel it. I, I think this is cathartic for the people who send in the videos. So a lot of times they're a little worried that they don't want to do it, but, but they find it to be very cathartic, you know, because they get to say something that's been bugging them for four years, that this is not my party. This is not um, the party that I that I joined and, and this guy doesn't represent me and, and they can get that off their chest and have other people hear that. I think that's cathartic. And that's a good thing. Um, but also it's just been resonating with people. I mean, you see it on social media. I hear it from people who say that they go to the site and watch the videos at night or, you know, what they're feeling down after a particular gross Trump event um, to, to, to just remember that there are decent people out there, that we, we do have a coalition of the decent. So please, rvat.org, send us your videos, send us your friends' videos, um, and, and promote them. Um, let's see here. Uh, long shot pipe dream is that the Lincoln Project would get ads and run against this guy. I don't know which guy we're talking about there. Um, uh, and pressures him to drop out. Hmm. Must have been a different uh, different candidate there. Uh, let's see. What else do we have? Um, if Trump loses, do you see GOP congressional leaders disavowing Trumpism? This is a great question, and this is why I think the the, the margin here matters. James Carville um, of Clinton fame was talking to us on the Bulwark podcast, and he's been talking to us about our strategy with Republican voters against Trump, and has been a great supporter. And and his view, which I think is right, is we need to crush him. You know, we need to salt the earth. And, and I think that the bigger the repudiation, the more people will listen, the more people will change. You know, these, these politicians, they're rational actors. You know, if the, if, the, if the mood of the electorate shifts, they'll shift. Um, so I think that's an important part of our mission. I, I'm not optimistic about that. I'm worried, to be honest, um, that, that Trump will stay around. Trump could run again. Trump Jr. could run. Um, that is something that concerns me. I, I don't think that there's any guarantee that we'll get the party back, but I think that it's something that's worth fighting for, and, and the bigger we beat them, the better. Q from Jane, I'm an independent. How can I help? Hey, Jane, um, thanks for asking. Uh, look, um, I, I haven't mentioned money, but 
any donations we will take five dollars ten dollars pick a video you like tell us what your favorite is you know we can help promote that video in the swing states um tell your friends uh, about you know tell your republican friends look at others look at these key states who do you know in these key states that, that can um that can post videos uh to to their networks um, that is that is a that is a big way uh, that you can help fill out our volunteer form on rvat.org. There are other things that come up, other ways that we can plug people in depending on their skills, where they live. Um, so uh, we'd love to have everybody's help. Um, uh, uh, let's see here. Um, a comment from Dave. I want to be bored by government again. Same uh, Joe 2020. Uh, let's see here. How can, how can you talk about Trump and bars ignoring the Constitution, the Berman debacle this weekend? Man, I mean, there's so much out there. There is so much out there. It is sometimes you do lose, lose um, things that would be all-consuming scandals in other administrations. Um, so, I, like I said, we have a sister group, Republicans for the Rule of Law, that is working on... Um, uh, issues like this, uh, holding the administration accountable. There are a lot of former Republican lawyers that are advisors on that on that on that um, uh, um, group. Uh, I wish that the Democrats uh, in Congress were having hearings um, about Bill Barr. Uh, I think that, frankly, Bill Barr should be impeached. But one man's opinion. Um, uh, I, I think that some of the oversight has been um, uh, not particularly. Uh, uh, not as robust as I would like it to be. Um, as far as our group, Republicans, voters against Trump, you know, a lot of rank and file voters, these sort of arcane legal issues, what's happening in the Justice Department isn't what resonates. For some it is, you know, and, and for some there definitely are Republican. I, I have people in my network who are Republican lawyers who, who sucked it up and voted for him last time because of the judges. Um, who, who I think are, are flippable this time. So, you know, particularly if they're in the legal community, raising those voices, um, um, you know, to try to, to, to win over voters, I think is important. Uh, the judge's issue in general is important. We had a video submitted, oh, I'm forgetting her name, but from a young woman in Texas who, who said straight out, I voted for him for the judges last time. And and I just can't do it this time. You know, I, I know we might get one more judge um, or two more. Who knows what happens in the next four years? But I, I just can't do it. Uh, elevating that message, um, I think, is important. I know that uh, anybody here who's a Republican who's watching this has a friend or a family member who who used the judges as the reason last time. And uh, you know, it's hard to it's hard to see the value proposition there, uh, given what we've given what we've seen from the Supreme Court. Let's see, any other uh, questions here? How do we convince Republicans vote by mail isn't dangerous? Um, well, uh, frankly, we kind of need to convince Democrats to vote by mail. <laughs> um, if Republican voters don't want to vote by mail, that's not really our problem right now. Um, as far as I think what you're getting at is how do we get Republican legislators to fund vote by mail and to approve vote by mail. And I, that's a tough task. It's just a tough task. And, and I think that, um, you know, there are good, there's good poll data out there that, that, that or, I'm sorry, there's good evidence out there. If you look at states like Colorado and Oregon and California that actually vote by mail helps Republicans. Um, so, you know, I think that's a compelling message for them. Um, but for the most part, I think we need to keep the pressure on about having free and fair elections. I mean, this is something that, that at least a certain segment of the Republican Party does still, does still care about, though. Um, uh, you know, I, I do think there's a complete irrationality. And when you have Donald Trump out there every day, like he did last night at TPUSA, demagoguing on this issue, then, um, you know, I don't, I, I don't see you know, a, a whole lot of room for convincing Trump acolytes uh, to push for it. Um, Connor, we had a question from Trump has a lot of problems with women and people of color. Do you think there's a chance that he dumps Pence? I, that's kind of a fantasy every time. I don't think so. I don't know that Nikki Haley or anybody like that would even really help that much. I think Trump's problems with, with women are, are pretty much related to Trump himself. Um, uh, question from Marie, how do you feel about Republicans that still support Trump basically just not lose voters uh, to me. I, I, I'm pretty grossed out by Republicans who are still going with Trump. I don't understand it. 
I don't understand why elected officials and senators who are up this time, um, you know, can't can't distance themselves from him when he's gassing protesters, when he's shooting rubber bullet grenades at protesters so he can have a photo op, uh, when he's giving up on dealing with a worldwide pandemic that's killed 100,000 plus people. I, I, it's mystifying to me that these people that I worked for and worked with can't can't even utter a, a, a negative word about him. And and I think that, that those who are in elected office probably deserve to lose. And I think that's another thing I'm happy that the Lincoln Project is working on in Senate races. Um, if you're in a state where you're not a swing state, but you have a Senate race, I think that's a fair place to register your distrust or your dislike for the president. As far as Republican voters against Trump, uh, you know, we've got to deal with the most proximate battle, and that's getting rid of Donald Trump. And so we are coming up with the best strategy that we can to do that um, based on research, based on focus groups, based on data. And, and elevating these voices um, is the best way to do it. And, and uh, um, you know, we have already seen uh, uh, the fact that, that, it's, that it's, it's gaining resonance with our, with our target uh, voting audience. Thoughts on best Biden VP from Greg. I'm going to take a sip of coffee here. Um, let's see, best Biden VP. Uh, I guess my answer is I, it isn't going to impact my vote at all. It isn't going to impact the vote of most people. But I, I think that there are some Republican voters that we talk to who, who, who would be concerned about Warren. Um, and Warren gives me a little pause. Um, I, you know, it won't change my vote. I'm for Joe no matter what, but um, I, I don't think Warren would be the best pick. Um, I, I have a soft spot for Tammy Duckworth. Uh, she's a veteran. I think it would be very challenging for Donald Trump to uh, attack a woman who is wounded in battle as being weak. Um, I think it would pretty much undermine a lot of his faux masculinity. Um, I, I think she's a reasonable um, Democratic senator. Uh, uh, I think that uh, Harris um, uh, is a completely reasonable pick. Um, uh, you know, if you look at the categories of voters that Joe Biden needs to win, it's us, it's the former Republican types, it's the blue collar Obama Trump voters, and it's the younger and largely um, and voters of color who 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 didn't vote in as high of numbers as they needed last time. Um, are there VP candidates that out there that help with any of those groups in particular? For me, I think it's on the margins. I, I really, I think that this is a do no harm pick. I think that Biden picks somebody, uh, I think Biden himself helps with all three of those groups, frankly. I think that's why he's in such a good position right now. And so if I was him, if I was advising him, I'd say do no harm, pick somebody you think would be a good VP, pick somebody you think would be a good president. If, 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 if you know, sadly or, uh, something happens to him, and um, uh, and and pick somebody that you trust. And and if you look at Joe Biden's past and, and why Obama picked him, I, I expect that's um, that's what he's going to do. Um, one more time here. We're about half an hour in. Thank you guys. If you came in late, I'm Tim Miller with Republican Voters Against Trump. Um, you can see me on Twitter at Tim O D C. Um, we're here to talk about our project, which is elevating the voices of regular Americans who are, who were Republican or are still Republican, but cannot support the absolutely lawless and despicable Trump administration. Um, we want to hear from them. We want to make them famous. And so we want to make you famous if you're watching this. And so, um, uh, you know, what we have done is put together a $10 million campaign to, to gather testimonials from Republicans all across the country who are going to say no to Donald Trump or vote for Joe Biden. And we're going to take the best ones and we're going to advertise them on YouTube and Facebook and, and, and on TV and the swing states. Um, and, uh, you know, we're going to do some other things, too, and come up with other ways to disrupt his convention. And, you know, we had a fun ad about Lindsey Graham. I hope you saw with his old comments about Joe Biden. If you hadn't seen that, please go find that ad. It's on rvat.org. It's, it's a doozy. Um, but, uh, but our main goal is to convince soft Republican voters that maybe just this one time, maybe it's a pivot forever, doesn't matter to us, but for one time at least, say no to this party. You can't do it. You can't vote for this president. Vote for Joe Biden. Um, if you can, or at the very least, you know, just don't vote for Donald Trump again. 
Um, that's the main goal here. So we, if you um, are, are just joining us, um, again, Tim Miller, and, and please send us your videos, rvat.org. Send us your friends' videos. Um, if you came in late, I, I do have blue fingernail polish, which is from my daughter. She did a pretty poor job of painting my nails, but, you know, um, the best you can do. Q from Karen. Do you think Trump might refuse to leave the White House? I, I have, I'm of two minds about this, Karen. Um, one... I think that um, uh, I think we need to fight it up till the day he walks out. You know, I, I think that this is going to be a a campaign that goes till January. I don't have an inauguration day on the top of my head. January eighth, tenth, fifteenth, whatever it is. Um, uh, not till November. Uh, I think that um, you know he's going to try to do a lot of um, corrupt. Uh, things between November and January. I think if the election's close, he's going to contest it. Um, and I think this is going to be a fight all the way to January. I really do. At the same token, I think if he loses, um, Donald Trump has demonstrated to be a lot more bluster than he has been competent when, on a lot of these issues. Um, I think there are some exceptions where he's put competent people in place like Bill Barr and, and, and Stephen Miller who have, who have you know overseen um, just fascistic reigns of terror, um, uh, frankly. Uh, but uh, on balance, most of the time, Donald Trump talks about doing really extrajudicial stuff. Uh, he doesn't really have the competence to follow through. So um, my hope is we beat him. I, I think we'll, we're in for a two-month fight after that. And then I, my instinct says that he will send a lot of mean tweets and then go back to Mar-a-Lago and send more mean tweets from there. Um, let's see here. People watching me, Megan, Ben, Connor, anything else? What did I, anything I missed? Um, anything else you guys want to hear who are just still chiming in? Uh, otherwise, um, if everybody enjoyed this, uh, it's something I would like to keep doing. I think that it's important that we hear from, from Republicans, real Republicans out there in America. Uh, I hope uh, we hear from our Democratic and independent allies. What can we do better? How can we help convince people um, uh, to vote for uh, uh, to vote for Joe Biden? Um, so I'm gonna, I got one last question here that we bumped from Eric. I'm going to plug the website one more time, rvat.org. Send us a video. It's super easy. We'll make you look good. We'll make you famous. I promise. Um, we really need it. If you're not going to send one or you're not, you don't fit the uh, description, post it on Facebook. Send it to your friends in the swing states. Last question from Eric. What do you see as the future of the Republican Party? Do you think the Trump base will ever support a conventional Republican again? I'm worried about that. I'm really worried about it. I think the party's changed, changing. I think a lot of uh, the types of voters who really believed in, um, in, in having a diverse and welcoming country um, who believed in, in science and, and who were part of the technocratic wing of the party, a lot of these people have left or are here right now watching this or going to leave. And, um, and I think it's going to be hard for them to get them back. And I think the Republican Party, meanwhile, has gained a lot of voters who are anti-science, anti-immigrant. And, and, and reversing that is going to be a long fight. And I think it's a fight that's worth having. Um, uh, because uh, I, I'm, I don't want this country to descend into having two illiberal populist parties. Um, maybe it's a fight that's, that's worth having in the Democratic Party. Um, those are questions for January of next year. I'm happy to do a Facebook Live with you guys then and talk about those questions. Hopefully we'll have inaugurated Joe Biden at that point, and um, we can discuss strategy for, for, for how we can bring some classical liberal values back to our, our country um, at that time. Thank you guys for joining me. Um, it's been 40 minutes. Hopefully people liked it. If you did, we'll do more of it. If you didn't, whatever. Um, you can see us on Twitter. Um, upload uh, your videos, donate, post videos, file out the volunteer form. Let's beat the hell out of them. Thank you guys. We will um, we'll talk to you soon. This has been Tim Miller, Republican Voters Against Trump, live from Oakland.